Hello Indie Game fans, if you happen to tune into the live streams over the weekend, you might know that there's a new number one upcoming monster taming game in town, and as a lifelong fan of Pokemon, I'm only happy to see so many promising upcoming titles, so here's a look at my top 10 picks. Let's begin with Sky Climbers, one of the most ambitious projects in development, which incorporates elements of monster taming, open world action, multiplayer, city building and more. So much so that the ambition and scope of this game has made me doubt whether the developers are able to deliver. From its description, the developers are basically comparing this to Valheim, but where you have a monster companion by your side, having you building and crafting while fighting enemies and alien forces as well. There are multiple factions, named Dynasties here, procedural generation of the land and even planetary exploration, where certain creatures can be ridden as mounts as you explore the world. Sci-fi and fantasy combine here, and according to the latest development update, it's coming to us from a team of 10 people, which would be insanely impressive if they managed to pull it off. The long in development Rainbow Billy The Curse of the Leviathan has gone through its fair share of iteration and development, where the almost steamboat Willy inspired look originally shown off has morphed to include 3D objects as well. As the titular character, you're trying to restore colour to the world, which was stolen by the mysterious Leviathan, where the monster taming elements is integrated nicely with a fishing mechanic. Love the art and animation in this, where the action switches between turn-based combat and action-adventure exploration and platforming, so a no-brainer title for the list. Like Sky Climbers, another impressive in-development title is Kindred Fates, an open-world monster-teaming action RPG where you have direct control of your creatures, and thus have a more mature and darker setting where there's a corpse run mechanic, but if you fail to get to the soul in time, monsters can straight up die in this. It had a massively successful Kickstarter campaign and recently released the alpha demo of its combat system where you can already see the improvement from the original Kickstarter trailer in animations and environments, looking to be a very promising title. Another game which I saw on Kickstarter but was saving for a video like this is Monster Tribe, a monster taming crafting title but where the hook is the positional grid based combat interface. You're exploring and gathering resources as you wander around this mysterious island to uncover the mysteries of the past, taming monsters to aid you along the way. Multiple monsters take to the battlefield in every battle, where position matters since attacks, buffs and debuffs affects particular squares on the grid, and movement during battle is an essential component as well, almost Mega Man battle network like in nature. Interesting look in the overworld as well, and I'm curious as to how the crafting elements will factor in, so add another title to the watch list. Welcome to the world of Ova Magica. In a place where blobs and humans live side by side, a new adventure is waiting for you. I love farming and monster taming games, so when Ova Magica merges the two, of course I'm in. It's essentially Slime Rancher but with a turn-based combat element and villagers and relationships like Stardew Valley, so if any of that sounds appealing to you, certainly give this a wish list. The expected farming, fishing, 
Wood cutting, crafting, mining and bug catching elements are present, but adds in the dungeon exploration portion with turn-based combat. There's also an extensive crossbreeding system for the slimes, looking to have quite the number of permutations and combinations, and since we last took a look, it had a massively successful Kickstarter campaign, raising more than 12 times its target, giving this developer the resources and runway that she needs, so I'm looking forward to the final product. An upcoming monster taming title that is perhaps more in common with Digimon rather than Pokemon is Cassette Beasts, one where our heroes are able to transform into said creatures and can further combine any two monster forms into a further evolution. I love the look of this, where the 3D environments and 2D sprites are combined very nicely, and given that structurally, it's an open world RPG, I am curious about this. The stinger right at the end of the trailer does foreshadow something darker, perhaps more in line with a Shin Megami Tensei game which makes it of interest. I've been looking forward to the very retro pixel art title Koromon ever since I came to know of it, and despite multiple delays, it's still a title that I'm excited about. It does look like the what if scenario if Game Freak decided to continue to use high bit pixel art to make their games instead of 3D models, boasting a very classic look but with so much detail in the environments and battlefields. As expected, it does have elements like the shiny equivalent, built-in randomizers and nuzlocke modes and so on, but I really do love the designs of the creatures in this. Since we last took a look, I believe that they have signed with a publisher where it's supposed to be out in summer 2021, but let's see if it makes that window. A title that I was looking forward to is Monster Harvest, initially having a release date in May, but that got delayed by 2 months to July, where I'm fairly certain that it will make the date. It combines the monster taming turn-based RPG with a farming sim, which, as explained earlier when talking about Ova Magica, are two genres near and dear to my heart, so of course I'm in. Crops can be mutated into the plant-animal hybrids named Planimals in this game, having you take on a Team Rocket-esque evil corporation, so it retains that retro inspiration while adding in new elements. I love seeing monster taming elements seep into all sorts of genres since the Pokemon style turn based RPG can get stale after the unteamed iteration, so the Zelda style action adventure game Creature Keeper gets a very high spot. You are adventuring in the world, trying to find the sources of a mysterious corruption in the land, which is turning the creatures hostile, of course, having to befriend many of these in the process. The fluid action and animations of your character in combat, combined with the large variety of available creatures and their prowess in combat does look great, but there's a whole bunch of supporting systems and customizations as well. For example, there's a whole cooking system where you have to make the favourite food of the creature in order to befriend them in the first place, with a whole pocket garden farming system to grow the ingredients that you need for cooking and so forth. As someone who enjoys this genre for the variety of monsters, the bestiary which will slowly fill up as you get to know the creatures is one of my personal highlights, but certainly something very different in the space that's worth a look. 
it had a hugely successful Kickstarter campaign where the developer has been actively sharing updates, most notably adding sunglasses and hats to the creatures, so things are moving along and I cannot wait to play. And of course, the most insane looking title to come out of the Japanese Indie Live Expo is Pell World, an open world monster taming crafting title but with guns, where you can enlist the help of creatures in powering the town, harvesting wheat, building, farming and even in combat, and then things take a very weird and dark twist. You can use some monsters as literal meat shields from bullets, force them into working in a factory to assemble guns, sneak into protected zones and straight up shoot and poach creatures, and even consume these creatures as the world does face food shortages and harsh weather. The trailer shows the player straight up throwing an electrical pal into the water to kill a whole bunch of penguins, which makes this weirdly dark, which is obscured by the vibrant art style, looking like something from the mind of an insane person, which makes me even more interested in this, taking the number one spot. For a look at some awesome looking upcoming pixel art titles, check out this video and I will see you after the jump.